So, pediatric imaging. <clears throat> uh, we already uh, told a couple words about how the imaging techniques in case of the pediatric patients are different. But we need to <clears throat> organize all of those informations, uh, get them together, and uh, yeah. So, uh, of course, uh, you already know that the pediatric patients has completely different types of problems um, than adult persons. Uh, one of such uh, problem, one of such hmm, condition. Uh, that may happen in pediatric patient is the foreign body aspiration. So, why we are talking about this? Because obviously, um, the main diagnosis for foreign body aspiration is to find the foreign body. So we need some imaging technique to find this foreign body. Uh, so, and why in children? Because obviously children. Uh, does not have enough of the experience to know that it's a bad idea to get everything into the mouth. Uh, as a side uh, information, uh, generally children get so many things into their mouths uh, because uh, mouths has a very high sensitivity and they feel better with mouths than with hands, generally speaking. But never mind. So foreign body aspiration is when this foreign body gets to the airways uh, and it's uh, very dangerous. It may be life-threatening condition. Not always, but quite frequently it is. Why it is it so dangerous? There are two reasons. First of all, it may block all of the flow of air through the, uh, through the airways. So, uh, at child or, or a person can suffocate and second uh, quite frequently those foreign bodies are not uh, clean so it may lead to really really severe pneumonia that may be extremely dangerous so how we, we look for uh, such foreign body uh, we, there are a couple techniques of course it depends also what type of the body there is for example, if it would be something from metal, like the coin, uh, it would be very easily seen on a simple RTG. But if it would be, for example, some bean, you would not see it on RTG. It would be hard to spot it on anything, to be honest, because uh, such bean uh, ha can have very similar density to uh, the rest of the body, yes, so to the tissues around. Uh, for that reason, sometimes we need to get the bronchoscopy uh, with uh, additional uh, imaging techniques or not. So bronchoscopy is also uh, a type of the procedure that we can see what is in the airways, yes, what is in the bronchi, what is in the trachea. So this is another way, endoscopy is generally, to imagine what is inside. And bronchoscopy in this case is generally the best because when it would find where this foreign body is, it can also treat it, so it can get it out. Um, yeah. Of course, the CT scan MRI can help sometimes, but they, these are not the techniques that are the best for such situation. <coughs> so, um, what we can see here, and what is the problem? You can see that the lungs look completely different on both sides. Why? Because to the one of these those lungs the air gets into, to the other does not. That's why uh, it looks different. That's how we can guess that there may be uh, somewhere the foreign body. Yes, of course, this is not the only reason that will give such image, but one of the possibilities. Uh, Vesicoretro reflux. This is also some problem of children that uh, it's not very often uh, in adult person, uh, it's typical for children. So what is it? It is the situation that the urine flows back. Yes, so generally in normal cases the urine should flow, should be produced in the kidneys, flow through the ureters to the bladder and then out through the ureter. Uh, 
uh, but there are some conditions uh, that it does not work. As you can see in the pictures, uh, we can visualize that sometimes those ureters can be huge, can be stupendously big, generally. They should be only the tiny specks. Uh, and here you can see that they are extremely wide. They are so wide because <coughs> the urine flows back. And uh, how does how we would want to organize the imaging study in order to be able uh, to see uh, the ureter, see the bladder, see um, the kidneys also, and generally how the how the uh, urine flows. Yes, whether there is possibility that the of back propagation of urine so back from the bladder up or there is not because there should not be. Yes, generally the uh, urine should not flow up, at least not easily. Uh, the <clears throat> easiest things to do is get to the con uh, get the contrast medium into the bladder. Yes, and then look what would happen. So. Uh, we'll give the contrast medium to the bladder and then do the RTG, for example, yes. Of course, the techniques are changing, so there are also uh, ultrasonographies techniques that will also give this information. However, this is important to know that there is such condition in pediatric patients. And the other things that we already talked about in case of the pediatric patients uh, are the fractures through the uh, growth cartilage. Yes, these halter saris fractures, for example. Uh, no, okay. And there are some other types of the fractures, but uh, we will not delve into too much details. 